Breaking tonight, our worst fears realized as secret Pentagon intelligence assessments again leaked to a gaming site reveal that thanks to Biden's surrender to the Taliban and catastrophic withdrawal, Afghanistan has once again become a haven for terrorist plots against America. Evening, everyone. Welcome to The Next Revolution. More on that story in a moment with Congressman Mike Waltz, who joins us live tonight. But first, as if we and the world haven't suffered enough, we're told that the announcement, which according to an NBC News poll out today, 70% of Americans don't want to see, is happening on Tuesday. Yes, he's really going to go through with it. He can barely walk, barely speak, barely make sense, barely do the job he's got now, but whatever. Four more years. Four more years? He'll struggle to get through four more days. That's not being mean. It's what Biden's own people think, as I'm about to show you. This is the most perfect, delicious morsel of truth from the White House itself about the decrepit husk in the Oval Office. I spotted it in a long New York Times piece about the coming Biden campaign. Honestly, this is so good. I've been looking forward to sharing this with you all week. Here it is. This is from the White House, remember. They briefed the New York Times that they're going to try and keep Biden off the campaign trail for as long as possible to avoid, quote, the risk of age-related mishaps age-related mishaps just savor that for a moment the white house the biden white house is saying that biden needs to be hidden away because of the risk of age-related mishaps the risk of age-related mishaps the entire biden presidency is an age-related mishap and we saw the substantive consequences again this week of having a senile president on the debt ceiling debate house speaker kevin mccarthy put forward a clear and credible plan, including such wild and radical ideas as keeping the federal budget at 2022 levels and saving unspent COVID money. In response, despite going on and on about what a disaster it would be if there's no agreement, the White House is saying Biden won't negotiate, which Biden then repeated at the end of some rambling speech in Maryland on Wednesday. I made clear to Speaker McCarthy about how we should proceed to settle our differences. <clears throat> no one should do anything to je jeopardize the full faith and credit of the United States of America. Instead, I'm making threats of default if I don't go along with what they want, which would be catastrophic to the country. If we don't do it, they say they're going to let default take place. What? When you see that, it's obvious what's going on here. It's not that Biden won't negotiate. He can't negotiate. Who thinks for one second that that man you just saw, that bumbling, incoherent mess, could sit in a meeting and coherently debate the details of the debt ceiling? As a Wall Street Journal editorial observed over the weekend, quote, in 2008, Hillary Clinton ran an ad saying that she was prepared to take a 3 a.m. phone call in a crisis. Could an 84-year-old Joe Biden take a 3 p.m. call? Biden clearly doesn't have the mental or physical capacity to negotiate the debt ceiling, the federal budget, or anything else. But it's Biden's job to negotiate. When the voters choose divided government, it's the president's job to make a deal. A president incapable of doing that shouldn't even be serving out his current term, let alone asking for a second one. If there's a default, because Biden can't do his job, it would be the most costly age-related mishap in history.